Every year I tell myself I'm gonna start making Christmas presents in October so I don't wait till the last minute and put myself in a bind. Never happens, but I always say it. If you are in the same boat and would like to give the people around you handmade items but are running short on time, then here are five ideas for projects that are not only quick and easy, but also utilize scrap wood. Let's go ahead and jump into the first gift. Here are two simple wine glass holders that slip right on top of the bottle of wine. I feel like wine related gifts are a really good coverall because surely everybody knows somebody who likes wine. This holder has four openings for carrying four glasses. I personally pulled out a nice wide piece of purple heart for this one and started off by cutting it square. You want the size on this one to be sort of large so the glasses don't bump into the bottle itself. So I made mine eight inches by eight inches. I marked off all the dimensions before cutting out any openings, and if you would like a free template, then there is a link for you in the description down below. Also, before putting any holes or slits into it, I took the part to my router table and put in a simple chamfer along the bottom edge. Of course, this detail is optional. You could very easily just do a nice round over if you prefer. But I did a chamfer along the bottom and then a round over on the top. Now to punch out some holes. I clamped the part to my workbench using my armor tool clamps and then used a 5 8 inch Forstner bit at the ends of all of the glasses slots. You can reduce tear out on the back side of the piece if you drill most of the way through on one side, but then flip the part over and complete the last bit from the other. I did the same with the larger center hole, but then moved to the bandsaw and cut along my pencil marks in a straight line. I gave the entire thing a good sanding and then also a quick coat of finish. Now to use it, it slips right over the bottle and rests on the neck so that when you are carrying out a bottle of wine, you can also carry up to four glasses. On the same notion, another more cozy option is a two glass holder version. The YouTube channel Make Something designed this one and has an excellent template, so that's linked for you down below if you're interested. Again, it is a perfect project to utilize some of those smaller or thinner scraps you can't make yourself throw away. You can see that I'm using a mix of walnut and maple for mine, but you can also keep it as simple as the last and make it from one piece of solid wood. Another detail you could add in after cutting the openings is to run each one over a chamfer or a round over. This not only softens the look, but also creates a little recess for the holder to sit on the bottle's neck, then also the glasses sitting in their designated spots. Simple, but functional. Moving on to project two, which is a bath caddy. This one is so simple, but a wonderful gift for anybody who enjoys baths. Well, probably not a toddler, but any adult who enjoys the bath. Grab a solid piece of wood. It doesn't have to be a live edge, but I had a slab of walnut, so that is what I used. I'm using my track saw to cut the slab to length. Now you can sand it and throw a coat of oil on it as is. But if you want a few special touches on it, you can also add a simple wine holder and a few candle holders. This is made up of one flat piece that has a slit cut in it, then a few blocks that will act as standoffs for this piece. Once the assembly dries, it can be glued to the top of the bath caddy. You can also just cut a slit into the slab itself for the glass to be inserted into, but then you have a portion of the glass that hangs below the caddy, and by placing it on top like this one, knees won't have anything to bump into. Now for some candle holders, I wanted some slight recesses in the slab. To make these easily, I first made a round template so I could use my router to cut them in. Tracing out a candle, I cut it over at the bandsaw, then used a spindle sander to clean right up to my pencil line. And now I have a template where I can use a flush trim bed and my router to follow. If you're only making one or two circles, you might not need this, but if you're gonna be batching these out, then making a template will definitely save you time. Then to stick it to the slab, I used a few pieces of masking tape on the slab as well as the template, and then a few drops of Tight Bonds Instabond CA glue. This will temporarily hold the template down, but leave no mess after the job is finished. I started off with the bit high on the part, then used the plunge feature to drop it down. How deep you carve the recess is completely up to you, and it's as simple as that. Now it can be placed across the bath and enjoyed. Project three is button coasters. I've, I'm not a seamstress. I have no idea why I like these so much. They're just so cute. And they're also dead simple to batch out. In fact, you can use the same template set up from the Bath Caddy Candle Circle Maker because the first step is to make a circle recess that will be the inside of the coaster. To hold the template down, you can use the CA glue masking tape trick or double-sided tape, or you can make your template extra long so that you can clamp it down on either side of the board you are carving a circle out of. 
After carving out four insides, or however many you want to make, use a round object in the shop to draw an outside perimeter circle, and then cut it out at the bandsaw. Now you can tape all of the coasters together and punch four holes in the center. I used a drill press to make these, but you can also use a hand drill. And that one's all that one takes. You can grab some twine to really make presenting these to somebody ultra cute. Cute. Ultra cute. <laughs> Alright, project number three, four? I think we're on four. Wine holder, bath caddy, button coasters. Project four, tie holder. Or as my mom kindly pointed out, it could also be a scarf holder. This is just a cute little hanging device that can store any ties or scarves neatly in a closet. I also think this is a gift that the kiddos could get involved in making as well, especially if you have a scroll saw. I once again pulled out a piece of walnut for this one because this one piece of mine had some beautiful coloring in it and I thought it would look nice under finish. You could point it down to its final size or you can resaw it over at the bandsaw, which is what I did. Then I got two holders from this one piece of wood. Once it was down to thickness, I used my jointer to get one face flat and then used my thickness planer to get the other face flat. Now it was time to measure out and mark the portion to be cut away. And honestly, I just made up my own numbers here, but I do have a free download if you would like a template. Now, the tedious part is making all of the cuts, which really isn't too bad. I think it took me around 10 minutes per holder to cut all of the slots. I don't know if you can see, but I left a small lip on each one of my slot holders. And after finishing the project, I really don't think that this is needed. The ties do not want to fall off. So on the template, I simplified this project even further and just knocked that off. So it's two straight lines. Then it's just a little bit more sanding, a coat of finish, and now this is ready to hold an assortment of ties or scarves by simply placing the item in one of the slots and then hanging up the entire holder in the closet. All right, and then the final project is probably my favorite, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense because I don't serve that many salads. But project number five is salad tongs. I think a set of these utensils would be perfect in just about anybody's kitchen, regardless if they use them or not. I'm really on a mesquite kick right now, so I once again cut into my live edge slab to cut off a chunk long enough to make my tongs. I used a little bit of spray adhesive to temporarily attach a template for the profile of the tongs, and I linked to the template down below for you. Then I cut it out over at the bandsaw. After getting the main shape, I resawed it into two. Overall, you're aiming for about seven eighths of an inch here. Now to get some shape into the side profile of the tongs, I brought out my spindle sander. I used a kind of medium sized spindle to cut in the curve shape at the base of each tong. And this will create a little indent for some grippers as you're holding onto the tongs. Then I bumped up to the largest spindle to cut in a rounded shape on the tong portion of each one. And this gives the tongs that concave look to aid in the scooping action. A lot of hand gestures in this one. <laughs> After getting that front concave shape down, I used my four inch belt sander turned upside down and added a slight convex curve that matched it, but on the back. Since this one's gonna be in contact with food, be sure to use a food safe finish here. If you look for something called salad bowl finish, that'll work great. You could easily knock out a few of them from different wood species and let the family fight over which one they get. Real quick, I wanna thank this video's sponsor, which is Two Blind Brothers. Two Blind Brothers is a clothing company founded by two brothers who have been visually impaired since childhood, which drives the mission of their company, funding clinical research for the visually impaired. They design comfortable clothing based on their sense of touch and 100% of the profits go to finding a cure for blindness. Being visually impaired, the founders of Two Blind Brothers understand that touching and feeling materials while shopping is crucial. That's why all of their shirts, hoodies, and socks are made with the softest, most comfortable fabrics. Their website has no images and no descriptions. You choose what you want to spend and the two blind brothers will ship your surprise items to your door. There are only two guarantees. You'll receive something amazing and giftable. I personally received items that I'm super satisfied with, but I'm keeping them a secret to encourage you to participate in the Shop Blind Challenge yourself. So surprise yourself and your loved ones. Go to twoblindbrothers.com slash April to give twice and support the visually impaired this holiday season. It might not be October, but it's still the beginning of December, which gives you at least a little bit of time to knock out some handmade, unique gifts for your family and loved ones. I hope that this list gave you at least one good idea. If so, leave me a comment down below and let me know. Don't forget all of the templates linked for you down in the description. And I will see you on my next project. Or you can make some fancy wind chimes. <laughs>